Now on ITV1, hello, 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 what's all this then? Hello, 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 Wendy. I think it's going to be an arresting show here today in Liverpool. But will these truncheons be a big hit? Everything must go... Under the hammer. Hello, and welcome to Everything Must Go Under the Hammer. The show where we boost your bank balance by auctioning off your treasure possessions. This week, we revisited retired bookie Bob and his wife, Alwyn, didn't we? From forward. <laughs> and they made a grand total of 542 quid, didn't you? Yep. We did. At their house sale. Now, we looked through their collection of antiques and found some very special items to bring here at auction. Today, we're at Cato Crane and Company in Liverpool. Hundreds of antiques and collectibles pass through this sale room every week. There's plenty of artwork, furniture, china and glassware, as well as a few more unusual items. Meet Bob and Alwyn, today's sellers who have brought along all sorts of stuff to go under the hammer. And here's a reminder of how we got on at their house sale. Bob and Alwyn have lived in Fullwood in Preston for 27 years. When Bob had to give up his job as a bookie due to ill health, he swapped his flirting betting shops for the auction house and was instantly hooked. Anything that jumped out at an auction and said, buy me, and I bought it. <laughs> Furniture, ornaments, books, paintings, you name it, and Bob's bought it. Alwyn decided it was time for a good old-fashioned clear-out, so she enlisted the help of the EMG team, and together we organised the house sale, and a racy one at that. Wendy, it looks like we've got a strong field out there. I think they're chomping the bit. Are you ready? Yeah! yeah. Okay. We're on the starter's orders. <laughs> oh, oh, we're off. Come on through. We've got some stragglers, Jamie. He's fallen at the first hurdle. <laughs> the sale was a resounding success, and we raised a very respectable 542 quid. But it was Laurel and Hardy who had the last laugh. Well, look, maybe we could... Um... Does it cost you an arm and a leg? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it cost him an arm and a leg. Oh. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. It, it, cost, it cost him two arms and a leg. And a head. And a head. That's another bag that you got me into. <laughs> Back at the auction house in Liverpool, we're aiming to at least double the amount Bob and Alwyn raised at their house sale. But it's not just about the money, it's important to have fun along the way. Did they enjoy the house sale? It was amazing that it started so early and went on so long and the programme was half an hour. You never imagined that things happened like that. And the crew would... Well, it was just like having family around, really. Are you coming back next week? <laughs> With the auction not far away, it's time for our Jamie to take a look at Bob and Alwyn's special lots. Now, Bob and Alwyn have brought along these two figurines. They absolutely shriek of being European. Um, looking at the quality of the craftsmanship, the workmanship and the colours, these are not English pottery, but European bisque. That's a biscuit-like sound. Judging by the colours and the general design, I reckon that they're German, but annoyingly, and if you have a look, you shall see absolutely nothing. There's no back stamp, which does affect their sellability at auction today. Even unsigned pieces of the highest quality can put buyers off. Effectively, it's simple psychology. If people don't know what they're buying, then they're far less likely to match their cash with their instincts. Measure for measure, they're of good workmanship, nice colours, the lot is a pair. Let's go in at £180 and see if we make that today. Bob and Alwyn have all sorts going under the hammer today. As well as the pieces Jamie's focusing on, they're selling an ornately carved double wooden bench, three highly decorated candlesticks, a set of three beautiful birds, and a bisque lady on a swan figurine. 
But hey, if Bob's not careful, he'll be forking out more than he pockets. Oh, that'll be one he'll have to pay for. This rather strange object is a car hood ornament, or as we call them in the trade, a car mascot. And our Bob and Alwyn have brought in two. First up is the famous Jaguar, which I'm sure you'll recognise. And this, a little bit more unusual, a, a rider um, riding a racing horse. Now, I should say that horse racing, along with general equestrian wares, are perhaps the most popular amongst all sporting collectibles. I'm hoping we've got the horses set here today. And also people who are fans of car collectibles. That's called automobilia. Perhaps it'll be a race to the finish. Car mascots kind of really came into their own in the 1930s and gradually faded out right about the mid-1960s when this Jaguar was probably made. Now, in terms of price, well, these aren't the famous glass car mascots by René Lalique. They're worth thousands of pounds. However, Jaguar is still popular, and I think we could probably get about 30 quid for this chap. This one's a little bit more unusual. I think it'll appeal to the horsey set, and I'm going to say 45 pounds today. Hi, you guys. Hello. Hi. It's funny to see you here in the auction house. Well, the last time I saw you was at the house sale. That's what a correct. coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> well, I have to say I'm a bit concerned about you here today. You're not going to actually buy any stuff today, are you? Please tell me no. Possibly. All <laughs> depending on the auctioneer, actually. <laughs> what is it about auction rooms that you love? Is it the adrenaline I, buzz? I think it's just the, enjoy, the people you meet, really. I mean, I've met some marvellous people at auctions over the years. Dealers, uh, traders. And it, it's just the bidding and... Yeah, I think it is the bargain. Trying to get a bargain, that's yeah, what it that's ends the, up That's with. what it's about, isn't it? If you can buy something at 50 pence and sell it at a pound. But essentially, you're, you've got the gambling background, and, and is it because it's a bit of a gamble you don't know if you're going to get a good buy? Absolutely. Are you comfortable in an auction room? Yes, yeah. Especially when they've nice dress to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you're watching this at home thinking auctions look a bit daunting, you're not alone. For the first time, at bidding can be a nerve-wracking experience. Auction rooms, they're real places. They're spending real money. Now, the antique trade are quite happy to spend 10, 20, 30, 100,000 pounds. No problem, they're used to it. It's a business to them. But to uh, an average person, and most people are quite ordinary people like ourselves, they spending 20 or 30 or 100 pounds is, is a lot of money, actually. And if you're going up the bids in 10 pounds, they have to think about it. So I have to give them just a, a little bit more time. You'll see it happening today. Now, believe it or not, Bob and Alwyn have brought these two job lots along. They're known as crested ware, and they originally started out as uh, tourist items or souvenirs. If you have a look, all of them have got this kind of white background, and the name of the place is accompanied by um, a certain crest, hence the name. Now, a lot of these items are made by Goss. Let's, if I pick one up, we'll have a little look at the back stamp. And there, there it is, WH Goss. That's possibly the most famous um, maker of crested wares. Uh, not all the places or place names are equal. Um, some of the more popular attractions like Clacton Sea or Tenby tend to be more numerous and therefore worth less than some of the inland locations. Now, in terms of price, strangely, one tends to get up to 50% more if you sell your crested ware in the location from whence it came. Today, however, I don't see any Liverpools, so I think, realistically, we're going to make about £40 per lot. Have you ever gone mad in an auction room? Yes, at uh, Phillips in Chester once. It was an emerald ring, and Oscar he liked it, and I bid up to 6,800 for it, and it went for 7,000. Oh, Alwyn, why does he call you Oscar? I don't know, it's just something that's happened over the years. I suppose what? it's quite polite, and isn't it? Better than other things he could call me. You're his prize. A <laughs> sweet peach sometimes. <laughs> I'll embarrass gonna, him now. I thought he was going to bring a bloke, you know, coming along with Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I used to call her sweet peach, but I mean, when you get to her age, you can't call her sweet peach, can you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really excited for you today, and I hope it all goes well. Thank you. I mean, you're a sweet peach, but I'll call you Oscar when you get to her age. <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> 
Now, believe it or not, there are people who collect these sort of things. Police collectibles, including badges, whistles, uniforms, and even truncheons, are all sought after. Now, these aren't that early. Um, it tends to be the ones from the First World War, which are a little bit slimmer and more ornate that make the big bucks. However, I still think we will get 38 nicker for these, and I'm sure they will make an arresting sight on anyone's wall. Now, while Jamie takes a look at Bob and Olwyn's special items, I searched high and low for today's star lot. Now, I've been mooching around, and look what I found. This absolutely stunning naked lady bronze lamp. As you can see, she's been very tastefully covered up, because in the early 20th century, it wasn't the thing to run around in the altogether. And if you look very closely, unfortunately, she's been damaged in about three places on her arm. She's had fractures. Uh, she's still in fantastic condition. But we reckon she's been modified, perhaps from a gas lamp, because the electrics are, are not original, most definitely. We reckon today she'll make about £240. It's worth keeping an eye on her. So, with all of Bob and Olwyn's pieces to keep an eye on during the auction, as well as today's star lot, the Naked Lady Light. Now, remember, I put my own estimates on each of our special lots, and if I'm right, they alone should raise £375. With all the other bits and pieces Bob and Owen have brought along, we could be looking at a big total. Find out just how well we do at auction right after the break. <laughs> Ashamed of your mobile? Then get the latest handsets and free photo messaging from Orange at Phones For You now. We'll find the right phones for you. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. Spas open over the festive season for all of life's essentials. Like a 10-pack of Fosters for $5.99. Any three bottles from the Pier Door range for £9.00. And buy one Viennetta vanilla, get one free. And for hours you're just general on the mind. Real deals are so near, so spa. There are some fantastic Christmas savings at Boots. We have up to a third off a great range of electrical beauty products. And with lots of fantastic gift ideas to choose from, it's now even easier to give someone special an amazing treat this Christmas. Great gift ideas, great offers, now available at Boots. T-Mobile prepaid phone, 49.80. Check. Smoothie maker, 39.95. Here. George Foreman grill, 34.85. Got it. Panasonic digital camcorder, 399.95. Over here. <laughs> Xbox with two games, 158 pounds. Yep. Hip flask. Brilliant prices for Christmas. That's Comet Sense. Well, it's cold out there. Hey, don't forget your wow camera offer this Christmas only at your local Click Photo Point or Max Spielman Photo Store. Capture your festive family moments with this easy, fun to use camera. A 24 shot color film, free processing, and only $5.99. Only available from your local Click Photo Point and Max Spielman. Or order direct now on 0870 013 1000. Great prices on serious tools from B&Q. This jigsaw and sander twin pack is under £30. The 180 watt jigsaw fits the hand, so it gives extra control. And the 105 watt sand critter finishes the job. This jigsaw and sander, all for under £30. Great products at really low B&Q prices. Hello, I'm Steve Wright, and this is my new collection of Sunday Love songs. Over 40 classic tracks, including three of this year's biggest number ones. From Darius, Ronan, and Enrique Iglesias. Sunday Love Songs. Put the kettle on, will you, love? New Ambi Pure Instant Perfume. The next generation room spray made with real perfume essence. Transform your home with instant perfume from Andy Pure.
Is it me, or when Deck is talking, does Anne just kind of stare at you? What's all that about? See, I've got a contact on Time Team who gets me loads of fossils and bits of flint. Yeah, and I collect them. But don't be fooled by the rocks that I've got. I'm still, I'm still Harry from the block. Harry Hills, TV Bird, tonight, 10.30. Welcome back to Liverpool and part two of Everything Must Go Under the Hammer. We're at Cato, Crane and Company with Bob and Olwyn who are attempting to top up their house sale total by selling off their treasured possessions at auction. So, are there any last minute regrets? We don't regret a thing. Uh, everything must go and we hope it goes today. Here, here, for lots and lots of money. To a good family. <laughs> <laughs> now, I estimated the Continental Shepherdess and Hunter figures would make £180. The 1960s car mascots, one of a horse and rider and one of a jaguar, would fetch £45 and £30 respectively. The two lots of goss and crested wear pieces would go for £40 each and the single lot of two truncheons would sell for £38. Well, we'll find out how close he is in just a few minutes, but first here's auctioneer John Crane with a warning for potential buyers. And I remember about, oh, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago, a very good friend of mine, highly experienced dealer, uh, I wasn't very experienced, and we had a shelf lot of junk, bric-a-brac, I think it's called, and the auctioneer said, right, what do I bid for this? Two pounds. So I thought, well, two pounds, let's have it hand up two pounds. This friend of mine, who I respected greatly, highly, highly, highly experienced man, four pounds at the other side of the room. So I thought, oh, well, four pounds must be worth it to him. Six pounds, eight pounds to him, ten pounds. I only intended spending two pounds. At 160 pounds, I dropped out, and he got it for 162. After the sale, he sidled over to me and said, Johnny, said, uh, what was on that shelf lot? I said, well, I don't know. He said, well, why were you bidding? I said, because you were. He said, well, I was bidding because you were. It was worth two pounds, but we both thought that there was something on it. We hadn't viewed it, and we were just taking a chance. So you don't do that. Ask the auctioneer, otherwise you'll be throwing a lot of money down the drain. Well, the atmosphere's building. There's a feeling of quiet anticipation. Right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, a little John nervous. Continue. Even Take Bob and Alwyn are unusually uh, quiet. Our, um, OK, it's our turn. Here goes. Uh, continental figures, uh, Shepherd and uh, Hunter figures. Really, really, really nice, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start them at £50 and see where we get to. £50, somebody. £50 anywhere. Who's in? At 50 down there. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and 10, sir. 120, 130, 140, 150, I'm selling. 160, 170. 170, sir. 180. 190, sir. 200, and 10, sir and 20, Two and 30, and 40, and 50, 260, 270, 280, 270, are we all done? Sure? Now that means sure, doesn't it? That means sure this time. 270 pounds down there, all done. Well, so, well done. done. <laughs> well done, Mr. Cato, or whatever your name is. I've been making some uh, notes on my clipboard as the sale really starts to get into a flow, and I've noticed that many of the uh, lots up for sale come from estates. Now, effectively, when someone dies, the family um, often puts lots of the smaller and medium-sized items into an auction house like this. The bottom line is there are bargains to be had because many of them go without reserve. So you can find sublime items, collectibles, antiques, and sometimes even memorabilia for knockdown prices. Next lot is 229. Uh, 15 crested ware goss and others, crested ware pieces. A lovely lot, ladies and gentlemen, all in good order as far as we know. Check them out. Anyway, what do we was 15 of them. £30 to start me off. £32 each. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. What about £20 to start them? £20 is bid here, 20, and 22 everywhere, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, sir. Yes, 42 is bid, 44, sir. £42, anybody else coming in now? 44, lady here, 46, sir. 44. Oh, we'll take 45, you know. Oh, well, that's nice. Well, we're, we're good friends, aren't we? 45, right, what about 45, then? Yes, no? 45 is bid, is it? 45, do the same for you though, 46, because we're good friends too, 46, 47, 47, 48, 49, 
and we could round it up to 50 down here. You can have 52 now, though. <laughs> 50 pounds, the ladies bid at 50 pounds down here, all done at 50. Thank you, madam. Are you happy? Very yeah. nice. And Very nice. Seven, yes. Eight. Yes. Wow, I just said uh, 40 pounds for the uh, crested way. It's just sold for 50 pounds. Fantastic. We'll have to see how the next set does in a few lots' time. Well, the second lot of crestware sold for 46 pounds. Again, well above the reserve and above Jamie's estimate. Yes. Two, two, eight. Here, no, no, no. Here come Bob and Alwyn's truncheons. Two truncheons. Your dad would like this. Can't make it by anybody. Uh, uh, right, two truncheons. Nice, yeah. always nice things to sell, ladies and gentlemen. They do tell it from time to time. But anyway, there we go. What do we say? Um, five pounds to start them off. Come on, five is bid. Oh, seven fifty. Ten. Twelve, Mrs. Davis. Fourteen. Sixteen. Please, Mr. Davis. Sixteen. Eighteen. Oh, come on, let's have another one. 16 pounds here, 18 are gentlemen seated. 20, 22, sir, 24, 24 standing, 26, 28, 30, sir. 28, the gentleman over there, 28 pounds is bid. All done at 28 pounds. Any more? Can we round it off to 30 somewhere? 28 pounds, then all done. You bidding? No, 28 pounds down there, 28 pounds. Amazing. <laughs> It is amazing. Excellent. Fantastic. Where do you get those from then? Please. <laughs> the police. <laughs> yeah, some friends around it was an insane idea actually. So. Good. Yeah. We should have put wow. some we should have put amazed. some anchors. We have a pair of anchors at home. We should have put them with I hope you don't have them in the bedroom either. <laughs> with the truncheons. <laughs> You'll um often noticed uh, porters around the auction house. Um, they're holding up items so people around the floor can see. Um, there's a bit of patter, they say, over here, sir, it's all very polite. Traditionally, porters, or being a porter, is a really good way into becoming a valuer, or indeed, an auctioneer. And the next lot is 327, which is a car, um, horse and jockey, uh, car mascot, 30 pounds to start me off on it. 30 pounds anywhere, 20 if you like, I don't mind. 20 is bid. 20, 25 now, 30, 35, 40 pounds, sir, yes, 45, 45, 45, 50, 55, 55, 60, you hey, bitty? Very 60 good. pounds. We sell at 60 pounds now. Any advance, ladies and gentlemen, they're really good. 60 pounds, and I'm selling it. It's your bid, sir, make no mistake. 60 pounds, hurry up and put the hammer down, he says, I'm not going to do it. 60 pounds the last time. 60 pounds, thank you. And it's by Excellent. 9 That's 0, double your reserve. Mm -hmm. You happy? And yeah. the next yes. lot is 328. We never did put it it's on You're always again. afraid of somebody right. ripping pounds against well, yeah. 60 pounds. I said 45 quid. Lot 336. Um, a good object. 20 pounds for it to save time. 10 to start you off then. 10 pounds is bid. 10 anywhere. 10. It's got to be 10, sir. 15. I've got 20. And 22 with you, sir. Can you do 22? Can you do 21? You can't. No. 50 with me then. 20 pounds anywhere. Who's going to help me? 20 pounds anywhere. First unsold or second unsold after the whole sale. It's all your fault, sir. 22, <laughs> sir. If I put the rest to it, will you have it? If I put the rest to it, will you have it? Can't be bad. <laughs> Sold it, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, very generous. How do you feel about that, Bob? Very good. Very yes. Good. Yeah. You win like some, a, you lose yeah. some. Well, that's it. On both of them, on overall, they're very good. Uh, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Swings and roundabouts. Bob and Alwyn have sold every single item they brought along to sell, with a little helping hand from yours truly. Is there no end to your talents, Wendy Leavesley? Before we totty up just how much we've made this afternoon, will today's star lot light up the sale? Start me off. It's nice. I'd like it. Fifty pounds. It's bid there. Fifty. Sixty anywhere? Selling for fifty pounds. Sixty there. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. One hundred, sir. Uh, One ten. One twenty, doctor. Uh, One thirty. So sorry. One fifty here. One sixty, Mr. One sixty. One seventy. Are you still in, sir? One seventy. One eighty. One ninety. Two hundred pounds. Two ten, sir. Two twenty. 230, 240, 230 here. Now then, for the last time, ladies and gentlemen, it's 230 pounds. Are we all done this time? 230. Thank you. 230. Two determined bidders in the room, six. and we estimated 240 and pounds. Seven, it went for 230, eight, so we're pretty spot on. Eight. 
Well, the auction's over. The hammer's gone down on several of your items. Did you enjoy it? Very much. Very much, yes. Owen? Yes, wonderful. wonderful. Jamie, how did the items perform individually? I focused on six lots earlier on. First up were these um, sort of two continental, possibly German uh, figurines, the hunter and the shepherdess. Mm -hmm. I said 120 notes. And wait for this, they went for 270 nicker. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Next up, all that crested wear, you had two lots, didn't you? That's right. Um, I said 40 notes for each lot, that sounds about right. Yeah. The first lot went for £50, which was a little bit more than I had expected, and the second lot went for £46, so pretty good all round. Um, we've got those two truncheons. I put an estimate of £38 on this lot, and they went for 28 Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah. OK. Last but by no means least were those two car mascots. One was the uh, horse and racing mm. jockey. Yeah, yeah. And let's have a little look here. We got, on an estimate of 45, 60 pounds. Mm. Good. Very, Very good. good. <laughs> and then the Jaguar, very mm. popular one. Good seller that. 30 quid estimate, it's over 22 mm. pounds. All in all, fantastic. It was. You, you brought Excellent. some other lots in as well, didn't yes, you? And did. the, the amazing thing about your items is everything sold. Yeah. The ornate wooden double bench sold for £95. The large, highly decorated candlesticks fetched £280. The set of three birds, not cheap, flew out of the sale room for £45. And the bisque lady on a swan glided out of the door at £50. Today at auction, you made a phenomenal £1,036. I don't wow. believe it. Okay. You've made over a thousand pounds today. What does that make with the house sale? At the house sale, you made five hundred and forty-two pounds, <throat> which means in total, with the sale and today's auction, one thousand five hundred and seventy-eight pounds. Wow. wow! We can go to the casino. <laughs> so join us again tomorrow when we will be catching up with Joan and Mel Island from Urmston in Manchester, and putting some rather unusual items under the hammer. So see you tomorrow. Cheerio. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Well, we're out and about next this afternoon, visiting some truly outstanding winter gardens on all gardens, great and small. And later, at five past five, Mark Curry presents Catchphrase.